Okay, in this video, I'm going to do another truss uh, calculation example. Right, so here's my example here. I've already labeled everything for you. I had a pin here basically saying that my structure or my bridge or whatever I'm working with, uh, this free body diagram had a pin. So I have my uh, reaction force at A in the Y direction and a reaction force of at point A in the X direction. I had a roller here, so I put a roller there. Or I put a, um, a reaction force going up. Basically, a roller is just going to be kind of that normal force, but we are calling it a uh, reaction force. Um, and then up here, I've got some forces that are acting on this truss. And I've got another one here at B. So at B and C, I've got a 20 pound going down, 20 pound going down on C, as well as 20 pounds going to the left on C. Okay. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to uh, look at this and I'm going to decide what all my moments are. So I'm going to work moments first so that I can solve for one of my unknowns. I always like to start with moments before I kind of started with X's and Y's and then I always had to come back up to those calculations. So because of that, uh, I really think that starting with moments is the easiest. All right, so I'm just going to start here. Moments, so sum of all my moments have to equal zero. So that means then that zero equals, I'm just going to start with A, Let's say moment at R. So I have to look at every single one of the forces that's acting on it because every single force that's on it is trying to make it rotate. And if it starts rotating, things start breaking. And so I have to look at every single force, not just the Y directions, but the X's and the Y's. And I know when we started with the beams, we were only looking at those in the Y direction. But now that we've got things up above, we also need to be looking in the X direction because we have, uh, we have forces in that X direction as well that we have to look at. All right. So we're going to look at every single one of these. So RAX the perpendicular distance because it's right here at that point that we're looking at from our pin uh, the distance is zero okay. it's not going to cause it to rotate simply because there's no distance it's going to cause that all right plus now i'm looking at my r a y again there's no distance from that point because it is at that same point so i'm going to say it's times zero plus and there's no rotation going on uh, I think I already said that. That's okay. All right, so let's go on up to B and say the force of 20.0 pounds times my perpendicular distance here. Now, this is where it gets confusing, and I even got myself confused on it. But, oh, this right here is 7.0 feet, and this one's 8.0 feet. I forgot to write that down in my uh, problem. Okay, so... My perpendicular distance, so if this is a vertical, that means that my perpendicular distance would have to be a horizontal. All right, so the distance horizontally from that point is zero. There's no distance. Now, if I had something going horizontal, my vertical distance would be eight. But this is already in the vertical direction. So if I'm looking at my horizontal, because it's got to be the perpendicular distance, this is zero. So my distance is zero. And again, because uh, it's a zero distance, it's not going to be causing it to try to rotate. Okay, then I'm looking at point C. I've got two that I need to add into my calculation. I've got 20.0 pounds times if I'm on the vertical that means my horizontal distance is from here to here it's got to stay on the same plane so 7.0 feet now what direction is it causing it to try to rotate so if it's pushing down it's trying to push the whole thing down which would cause it to rotate in this direction that is a clockwise direction, so I'm going to call it negative. And I'm going to put a negative here 
I can really put that negative either on the 20, I could put it on the 7, or I could put it on the outside to say the whole thing is negative. It really doesn't matter just as long as you see that the whole thing's going to end up negative. Okay, plus I'm running out of room, so I'm going to move on down to the, the next kind of area just to continue. All right, so now I have 20.0 pounds. I'm on this one here times the, okay, if I'm on the horizontal, that means I need the vertical distance. So that distance from here or here to here, because it's just talking about the plane distance, is 8.0 feet. See, 8. So now coming on down to my last joint, D, I'm going to say plus R D Y. Oh, I forgot the rotation. I do that every once in a while. All right, so if it's pushing and it's pushing this direction, it's causing this whole thing to try to rotate this direction. Well, that would be counterclockwise. We're calling that positive. Now on here, my last one, R D Y times this one here is in vertical. So my distance is going to be the horizontal distance. So that is again 7.0 feet. Okay, that's all set equal to zero. And then this one here, as we try to push it up, it's causing this whole thing to try to rotate in that direction, right? Up and around. So it's trying to rotate in a counterclockwise direction. So again, that's positive. Set it all equal to zero. So once I calculate this, I know that this is going to be zero. Now, my reaction force, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be 10,000. It could be 10 million. But times zero, the whole thing is zero. So it doesn't make RAX zero. It just says that you know, RAX could be you know, 5.952 times zero. Well, this whole set becomes zero. Same thing with RAY. Again, it could be 59 million for all I know. It's, it's an unknown. But that times zero still makes it zero, no matter what it is. All right, so 20 times zero is zero. 20 times seven is 140 negative. So I have a negative 140 foot pounds. It's rotating here. Okay. Then here I've got 160 foot pounds. So I'm going to say 0 equals 140 negative plus 160 gives me 20 foot pounds. Okay. Plus RDY times 7.0 feet. Okay, so now I'm going to move this over. So I have negative 20 feet, foot pounds, excuse me, equals R D Y times 7.0 feet. I'm going to divide it by 7.0 feet. So those cancel out. 7.0 feet. Feet cancel out. And it gives me R D Y equals negative 2.86 pounds. So I'm left with pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Equals negative 2.86 pounds. And notice now my arrow is incorrect then. It's actually going down because it's negative. Okay, so next thing I need to do is solve for my RAX and my RAY. RAX, let's just start there. So the sum of all my forces in my x have to equal 0. So that means that 0 equals, I'm going to look at all of my x's and add them together then. R, A, X. My only other one is this one here. So I'm going to say plus a negative, because it's going to the left, 20.0 pounds. So that means that RAX is equal to 20.0 pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Okay. All 
right, next I'm going to look at the sum of all my forces in my y have to equal zero. So that means then that zero equals, just gonna kinda go through and add them all up. I have an r, a, y. Here I have a y direction. So I'm gonna say plus a negative 20.0 pounds. Moving on over here, I have an x and a y. I'm only looking at the y's right now. So again, a negative 20.0 pounds. Okay, moving to the last joint. I have going down a plus, plus a negative 2.86 pounds. Okay, so I calculate that. And let me find where I put it. So I add each of these up and I have R A Y plus a negative 42.86 pounds all equals zero. So that means that R A Y equals 42.86 pounds. So I can go ahead and put that in. All right, so I have all my reaction forces figured up. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and kind of circle those so it's easy to find for the grader. Makes the grader happy. Makes you get better grades because I don't count off as much <laughs> when I can find your answers. Okay, so next thing I need to do is I need to find my members. So I've got these reaction forces, but I really need to know how much force is acting on each of those members themselves. So I have member AD here, I have member CD, member BC, member BD, and AB. So I've just labeled my members. So now I'm going to break them down into each joint. So if I look at this whole problem itself, that whole problem has too many unknowns. I've got one, two, three, four, five. I have five unknowns. And with five unknowns, I can't solve anything. So I have to break it down into simpler concepts. So at each joint, it has to follow the same rules. Every joint, all the forces in the X have to be zero. All the forces in the Y have to be zero. So whenever I'm looking at this, uh, I can break it down, I can look at A, okay, so if I just draw A, it's going to look something like this. Now, my member AB, I'm going to assume is under tension until, you know, if it becomes negative, then I know I was wrong and it was under compression, but I first have to assume until I know. Okay, this is AD, again, we're assuming it's under tension unless I find out that it's compression with the negative. Okay, I know this value right here is 20.0 pounds. Okay, I know that this one right here is 42.86 pounds. So I've taken just this joint right here and I have brought it down by itself. Well now I have two unknowns but in the some of all my forces in my X, I only have one. Some of all my forces in my Y, I only have one unknown. So I can solve for each of these. And you can pretty much look at it and tell that these are both under compression. But let's go ahead and do the math. So sum of all the forces in the X equals, okay, here's my X's. So this one's going to the right, so I'm gonna say 20.0 pounds. This one's also going to the right, so I'm going to say plus AD. All has to equal zero. Okay, so that means then that AD equals a negative 20.0 pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and change this arrow because a negative here means it's under compression. And I'm going to change the arrow to the direction it actually is. So AD equals 20.0 pounds under compression. 
So now sum of all my forces in my y have to equal 0. So that means then these y's, I have a, b, it's going up. This one's also going up, so I say plus 42.86 pounds, all equals 0. So I know then that a, b equals negative 42.86 pounds. Again, that means it's under compression because it's a negative. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to erase this one and make that arrow going down. Okay. And I'm going to say AB equals 42.86 pounds under compression. So I can go up here and go ahead and say AB equals 42.86 pounds under compression. I can go ahead and say AD, I don't really have room for it, but I can go ahead and fill that in as equaling 20.0 pounds. And it's starting to get a little bit messy, but hopefully you understand and, and get the point of what I'm saying. Okay, so now we've got each of these values, okay, we've got my AD, we have my AB. Let's move on to the next one that's a simpler one to look at. All right, well, C is also simple. I don't have any angles at it. So I try to solve all those first before I have to move to one with an angle. So at C, it's going to look a lot like this one here at A. All right, so C, I'm going to draw this the way it looks. Okay, so these are right here. All right, I'm just pulling down. I'm looking at C. I'm breaking it apart by itself. Okay, and then I have these members. We're assuming under tension. So this is uh, my members, and this is member BC, and this is member CD. So I just took this right here, that kind of drew a little box around. I took that joint, and I brought it down. Okay, again, all my forces in my X have to equal zero. So that means that zero equals B. C, it's going to the left, so it's a negative, plus a negative 20.0 pounds. It's going to the left. So that means then that BC equals negative 20 pounds. Right? Again, BC is under compression then because it's negative. So I'm going to erase that best I can. I don't have a very good eraser here. But that means BC is under compression, and it is 20.0 pounds under compression. Went ahead and filled that in. I also know that all of my forces in my Y has to equal 0. So that means that 0 equals, this one's going down, so I'm going to say negative 20.0 pounds. This one's also going down, so I'm going to say plus a negative CD. All right, again, that means that CD equals a negative 20.0 pounds. All right, so again, it's under compression. So I change my arrow. I'll just scratch it out this time. Okay. And I'm going to say equals 20.0 pounds under compression. Okay, so now the only thing I don't know, so now I know CD, I could actually put it up here, is 20.0 pounds under compression. I know BC equals again negative 20, or excuse me, 20 pounds under compression. Again, this stuff's just getting kind of I should have drawn it a little bit bigger. Hopefully you drew a little bit bigger picture. All right, so I have AB, it's 42.86 pounds under compression. 
I have AD, uh, looks like 20.0 pounds under compression. I have found BC to be 20.0 pounds under compression. And I've also found CD to be 20.0 pounds under compression. I have not found BD yet. So at this point, I can either pick a point B or I can pick point D. Just my personal preference, I'm going to go ahead and pick point D simply because it's the roller. It really doesn't matter because you're going to be able to solve either one. I'm just going to bring in a piece of paper up here. And this is at joint D. So I'm just going to take this joint here and I'm going to redraw it. Right? I know this one is under compression. Right? CD I know equals 20.0 pounds and it's under compression that's why I'm pointing at this direction I also know this one's under compression and I already found it to be AD and it equals 20.0 pounds under compression All right, and I also know that there is another force right here that is a reaction force yeah DY which equals negative 2.86 pounds. And then I have, I'm going to assume this is under tension. Okay, because I have to assume they are always under tension unless I find it's negative. And this one here is BD. Okay, so I'm just drawing, again, this is the one I'm isolating. I'm just isolating this joint. And again, I isolate the joint so that uh, I'd have fewer unknowns. They still have to follow those same rules. All of my forces, the sum of all of my forces in my X has to equal zero. So I'm going to start there. Okay, so zero equals, and this is my X's. So in this direction, I have a 20.0 pounds. It's going this direction, so it is positive, plus do I have any more X's? All right, I have a Y here, I have a Y here. I do have a vector. That vector has an X component and it has a Y component. So I have right here an F of Y component and right here I have an FX component. All right, so I have an X component going this direction. I have a Y component going this direction, All right? Because I've got to break it down so that I can solve these in just terms of X's and Y's. And this is going both X and Y direction with this vector. So to solve for my X part, I use the formula where it's the force equals, so the force in the X direction equals your actual vector force. Okay, whatever that vector is, which happens to be BD in this point, all right, that force times, now I'm looking for this one, all right, so the formula is cosine for X, so cosine of my angle. Okay, so I'm going to plug this in. I've got BD is that force, and then I say cosine of the angle which the angle here you can tell is 48.8 degrees. Okay, so I'm ready to solve for it. So that means that negative 20.0 pounds equals BD times cosine of 48.8 degrees. I need to get BD by itself. So I'm going to say divided by cosine of 48.8 degrees so that it cancels out on that side. Cosine of 48.8 degrees. So BD equals, okay, so it should equal, let me check my math here. Oh wait, I've got to change my negative here. BD was going in the x direction, the negative x direction. 
hate it when I mess up right at the end of a video because it's going to take too long to remake it. So this x direction is in the negative direction. So that made this all positive because I would have just moved the BD over making it positive. Okay, so I'm just going to make that a positive. So now that makes it a positive 30.4 pounds. Okay, you got to watch those signs or I would have missed that. So now I know BD is positive, so it's under tension, so I leave it alone. All right, so at this point, I want you to actually write these out as each one. I want you to put BD equals 30.4 pounds. Make sure you get those units in there and say under tension. All right, show the others as under compression so that you can get all your points. Okay, hopefully this helped.